consent agenda, I would like to remove the um, November 28th. Okay. And unless, that's the only one I want to remove. Is everybody else okay with the 8th, the 10th, the 3rd, the 14th of December, and the 14th and 19th of November? Yep. I would okay. make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the removal of the November 28th minutes. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Please aye. Okay. We are five minutes ahead of time for Jeremy. Is he going to call in? He's going to call us. Yes. Um, why don't we, can we, until we hear from him, let's make good use of our time and go ahead to our, eight, um, our FY24 budget planning session. Okay. Uh, we talked at one point about December 30th, but I didn't put it on the calendar. At 5 o'clock, which is Friday night. At 5. And you know how things go when they're not on your calendar. Now I've put something on that. So, um, are, are, but are you available on the 30th at another time? I'm, I'm gone. You're yes, gone? I'm on vacation, family vacation from the 29th through the 8th. So I'm afraid that my inclination is for the final planning session. I'm going to you guys to meet without me. I mean, I just think it's too difficult. Now, what about, um, we don't have a meeting on, on January 2nd that we know of, right? There's nothing we, happening? We do not have a meeting on the 2nd. If what, we waited until then, we would, we would really have to button it up. And that's... I think we could do it. What's our public sheet? I didn't bring that timeline. What's the I didn't. I didn't bring the timeline with me, line? but... Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't go to the printers until... Oh, let me see. Maybe I did bring it. Hold on. There are a number of things here. There's no signature line or signatures. No, these are, these are all part of... Yeah. That's what I'm thinking is if we did it in the week. Okay, here's the timeline. Okay, what's the. Um, <coughs> folks, we're just trying to figure out how we complete the budget, which yeah. has to go to the printer book, 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 in mid January. So. And we're final, final budget approved by Select Board January 9th. Yeah. So, okay. So we do it on the second. So Monday. Right. So the second is. Um, I'm fine with the second, knowing that it's done, it's not our. It's not a drop dead. So mm -hmm. we have a still room, a little room left. Do you want to do at seven, or do you want to do earlier? I'd be up for earlier. Can anybody? Mm -hmm. There's. Do you want to do? Well, just drink half a bottle of bourbon then, huh? <laughs> or bring it with you. <laughs> at five, do you want to do five o'clock? Make my best decision. Can you guys do five? five Mark's gone anyway. Do I answer the where it looks like yep. you answer? Yep. Hey Jeremy. Hi there. Perfect. Hang on. Okay, so we'll do a special what did you say five o'clock? Yeah, special meeting on January second. Okay, that's an easy one. Okay. And before we leave tonight I have to put it on my calendar. Okay. Jeremy, we just set ourselves a budget meeting for Monday, January 2nd at 5 p.m. FYI, in case you care. Okay. Okay. Um, Jeremy, you are here on your request that 
we make we make take some action related to ma mailing election ballots in March. I'll let you speak to it. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we hear you great. Okay. So yeah, I got um, just requesting that all um, uh, registered unchallenged voters get mailed out for the town meeting. And that can you, uh, that's for all, all um, elected positions in Calus. Yes, everything that'll be on the ballot. Because we're having a town meeting in person this year, yeah. there are a number of um, elected offices that will have this on the floor as well. Uh, that would be cemetery commissioner, um, public trustee, those types of things. And the ones that are elected on the ballot are school stuff, select board, lister, the, listers. The, yeah, the school will be on the school ballot, but yeah, lister, uh, select board, town clerk. Um, yeah. And we and we just approved mailing the, the for Washington and Central Supervisory Union to mail. Yep. Those ballots. We are, we just Correct. approved that. Yeah. Is there a motion? So, uh, the, plan, the plan would be to piggyback on that and have LHS, who is going to be mailing the school ballot, also mail our ballots this year. Um, I think last year we spent a, a little over $500 in postage. I think all in all it was about $1,500. So there is a fee associated, it's not free, uh, because it's a local election. All statewide, paid by the Secretary of State, local elections are paid by the town. Okay. If we so, want to so, Jeremy, the supervisory union would include our ballots with their mailing, and we would just pay the difference. We pay our fair share, whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. that was. Uh, it'll be just the one ballot, so it's you know, it's a it's a stamp issue. It's postage, and um, there'll be just the two ballots in there. Okay, two ballots, one for the school, one for... Yes, yeah. okay. school ballot, town ballot. So is there a motion to mail the town's election ballot? Um, yeah, election, a, a motion to mail, that's really what it is, mailing the election ballots. So moved. Yeah. To, to all, I would just, can I just yes. include... Yep. To yeah. all registered, uh, registered unchallenged. Yes. Yes. That will help us avoid another you know, 150 ballots that would go out and just get returned. Right. Okay. Thank I you would add, that. I'll add that to my motion. Okay. And Thank you. Second, Second. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. Are you staying? Fantastic. Are you Thanks staying? Thanks for the flexibility and allowing me to call in. I really appreciate it. I'm still acting. In my professional Uber driver for my teenager, so it's um, <laughs> very appreciated to uh, allow me to participate and still take care of my responsibilities as a parent right now. Well, <laughs> we're, a little bit, so yeah. we'll, say. well, we're glad you joined us. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Have a great rest of your night. Did I hang on my phone? Oh. Uh, um, it may not. I don't know. Wish the stop button. There we go. Okay. Um, next up is uh, Curtis Pond Dam presentation. So somebody is here in the like voice to take the lead. Do you want to join us up here, Jeff? Tucker. Jeff Tucker. Oh, Hi, Jeff. Hi, folks. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Yes, uh, my name is Jeffrey Tucker, and I serve as an engineer for the engineering firm of Du Bois and King, and I'm here to give the board and the community a brief update on the status of the uh, Curtis Pond Dam design. All right. So, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, again, I was asked to be very brief, so I'm going to go through this with the split, and then obviously if you have questions, you know, let me know. But as uh, Dean Kay has been retained. You know, uh, through the town and the uh, Curtis Pond Association to prepare bid ready construction documents to um, uh, repair the dam. And 
we are largely completing that process as a panel. We've started last summer, we've had a number of meetings, been out there and met with the public and such at the dam site. We've been speak doing up, speak up just a little, the people behind me. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. Yes. Hi, everybody. Hi. Would, may I stand if that's okay? And, yeah, um, do whatever you want. Please, okay. yep. Just, just remember that we especially need to be able to. I can it. project well from both sides. It's great, if that's you. okay. Thank you. So, we are nearing completion of the updated of the design and the permit. That's basically what we've been pulled on to do. The um, status of the design component itself is right around the 95% complete. Mm -hmm. We are putting the finishing touches on some of the, the, the design elements and working with the dam safety engineer. Uh, it's Vermont State Dam Safety Engineer. The town submitted the permit application last July with the understanding that the final technical documents would be submitted about this time. And so that is all underway. There's been no, and no issues, uh, no concerns, and it's come together largely as we anticipated it would. Uh, for, for, for folk just, or just to refresh memories, the existing dam is to remain in place. And we're gonna be constructing a new concrete wall on the upstream side of the dam. And, uh, and that will be designed to carry the load of um, severe storms. So, you know, even if the existing dam was to wash away to some extent, the, the new wall would hold the pond in place. So we don't lose the water. We don't have a safety, public safety issue. So uh, the water level remains the same, and there's no changes there. Is the existing dam still going to function so that the water runs through it? Yes, the, the, the little bridge where the water flows underneath and then mm -hmm. spills out, um, that it will be widened a little bit. So we may need a little, another little bridge to go across that, mm -hmm. but water is still going to convey from the pond and upstream through a, we call it a, a sluiceway, and then spill over the front of the dam as it does now. Okay. So um, the, the stone walls and the downstream again and all of that stays. Okay. We expect to have a grass cover of the existing dam when everything is done. It's going to be leveled out a little bit right now. It's, it's some undulations and it just changes to that over time. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, a temporary coffer dam will be placed in the pond just upstream of the dam, 100 feet or so. And that area will be dewatered during construction, and we will be holding back the pond. That's an inflatable coffer dam. Yes. Sir. Sits on the bottom of the pond, rests there, so it's a pretty low, low impact. You just fill it with water? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Comes in all folded up like a giant inner tube. We lay it out and pump it full of water right from the pond. Fills up and does a wonderful job holding the pond in place. So that's the basics of the status of the design and of the permits. There are a handful of them. As I've already mentioned, the Vermont Dam Safety Permit has already been submitted uh, this earlier this summer. We've received official word from the state of Vermont on a bunch of other permits. One of them is the Vermont Wetlands Permit. Did you say the dam safety permit has already been issued? It's, it's been, been submitted. The application has been, been submitted. submitted. So in other words, the permit has been requested. Right. The, that applica that that application the, application the application. It's been filed, yes. Yes, jointly by the town and the Curtis Bond Association. Right. What right. Are, but when you submit a permit application, you're waiting for approval, right? Is that that's correct. Yeah, that's yeah. what yeah. I wanted to clarify. Yeah. yeah, that was what I was getting at. Yes. Yeah. We uh, received uh, an official um, uh, correspondence from the state of Vermont the other day that a Vermont wetlands permit is not required. There are four other permits that are, uh, I've, and I've laid those out if, I could, you know, if you'd like, you this or if you already have it. Um, the reason I'll, I'll take one if you, if you have an extra. The reason a wetlands permit is not required is because there would be no dewatering behind, beyond the coffer dam. A little bit of that, but also where we are impacting, it's small and it's within the allowed use of the repair of an existing structure. Okay. That was their, their primary, you know, which, which was mm -hmm. it, it, good, to, good to affirm that, important to affirm that. So we do have four other permits. Um, Army Corps of Engineers, Rare or Threatened and Endangered Species, a Shoreland and a Conditional Use, and in coordination with SHPO. I have paper copies of that. 
I understand they've not yet been warned, so my understanding is the board cannot act on them this evening. Right. But right. if um, with the board's concurrence, with the chair's concurrence, I'd like to, you know, uh, deliver these perhaps to a representative from Cruise Pond Association, and then she can coordinate and get them ready for your next meeting. If that's okay. Yeah. Yes. That's Our fine. next meeting is January 9th. Correct. That's enough time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They're all ready to go. Great. And ready for for signature. Okay. Yep. And it's all you said. There's. Army Corps, mm -hmm. rare and threatened and endangered shoreland, conditional use, and what's this historic preservation? So we need to be letting SHPO, Vermont Historic Preservation Office, aware of. That's a, it's oh, a there's no con permit required. No, it's a condition of the Army Corps permit. So we've teed that up and, and, and we'll be advancing that here in the coming days to a week or so and letting them know. Um, we couldn't have gone too far earlier because they need to know exactly what's going on and now that the design is largely completed, we'll be able to tell them that. Okay. Question My 10 minutes are so. So, question, is the, so you've had kind of, since the initial application was filed, do I understand you're saying you've had conversations with the engineer at Dam Safety to discuss the design? Yes. And what have those conversations indicated? That A, they're aware of and they concur with, with what we're going to be proposing. That uh, they need to get our final and official set of drawings and specifications for them to process and issue the permit. And those <clears throat> final drawings, mm -hmm. although you, you submitted with you know, we have in our materials a whole bunch of engineering drawings. Those are 95%, they're not quite done. That's correct, there's, I, and, and I say 100%, we want to meet with the Vermont Dam Safety Engineer. I would like to meet with him, go through everything, and, um, you know, but I wanted to, to meet with the town first as the owner, make sure that there's... We're, we're not the owner. We're not the owner. I'm yeah. sorry, I misspoke. So I wanted to meet with the town and, and affirm you know, where we are at, and then from there, my intent is to reach out to the dam safety engineer and um, pull everything together, if you will, and get final concurrence. Then we'll issue the stamp to our 100% plans, and then we can get that finished moving forward. Yeah. And in the, in the design that you have, I remember we talked when there was a meeting at the dam, there was some discussion of putting stone, a, a sort of a stone face on the very upper part of the concrete dam on the upstream side so that it would look like it looks now, like, like a, a rock dam. Yes. Is that included or not in your design? It, it will be in there in our final going 95 to 100 is to show those in there, yes. That's our intent. Is the exposed portion of that new wall would have some stone lining on it. So, it, so that it would match with the current yes system. exactly okay yep we may even use some of those stones that are there to move them on the data concrete what's the projected timeline to start well that's a that's a function of i think you know final concurrence from you know the town from the association and funding in place you know to do that so we'll be prepared to go in 2023 if that's the pleasure of the people making the decisions on this who will be doing the actual work? The, I would expect that, we'll say the town, um, will be bidding the project to qualified contractors. So you're going to do, go do an RFP? Yes. And there's, so the one that's been out there is just one possible contractor, right? Absolutely. And we would certainly recommend he's included in that process. Okay, so you're going to, you have somebody already, but you're going to do a new RFP? Well, well, we'll seek concurrence from the town on that process. You know, if they're, uh, normally, most communities will be, you know, we get our projects out. So I'm assuming that's the, okay. but we'll affirm that. What does the engineer say, what is the construct, what is your understanding as the ideal time to do the construction? Of the, of the years, of the season. Right. Our recommendation will be to um, begin construction on or around early August. So I could see us in the middle of uh, July. This is just a generalized time. So we install the cofferdam out there, and then we dewater from the cofferdam down to the existing dam, again holding the rest of the pond, 
in place. And you know, the estimates is about three months worth of construction duration to get in and make the improvements and wrap everything up, clean up, and pull back out. And so I'll certainly be recommending, uh, you know, to start that in the middle of July to, mi to minimize. Um, would the would the would any of the entities, to your knowledge, who would bid or do the construction, would they be bonded and have insurance? Yes. And we would have a requirement of that in our construction documents, yes. <clears throat> and are you bonded in that insurance? We, uh, we, we have engineering firms, professional yes. services firms, have professional liability insurance. Right. Okay. I don't so, have construction related bonding. Right. Just so I can make a note in the minutes, the contractors will be bonded and insured. We will be requiring that, that, that meaning that, a performance bond. And to, also to complete insurance. the project. And, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, builders risk insurance. Okay. All of those all right, things. That's that's important. And what did you say about Dubois and King? They they have professional liability insurance. Uh, Jeff, you said you could start in twenty twenty three. Did I uh, is my is my note correct on that, or did you say twenty? We would be prepared to start in twenty twenty three. Yes. And what is what's the What's the critical path to, well, two things. What's the critical path, you said prepared to start, but what has to come first? And then what does start mean? Sure. So in, in order to average, in order to go in, in and hire a contractor and authorize them to proceed, you know, we would, we would want the permits in place, okay? So we expect those to be pulled together here within weeks to a month or so. That so that will certainly be, be ready to go. If so even even if we only make the formal application for permits on January 9th, you still think we'll get them back? I do, and okay. primarily because the longest the lead time is the dam safety engineer that uh, dam safety engineer dam safety permits. Get my words correct. Mm -hmm. And because that's already been submitted, my understanding is much of the administrative work has already been completed. Okay. So it's primarily the engineering office themselves reviewing the plans and specifications. I expect the back and forth with them, you know, some reviewing comments and stuff like that. So I expect that, you know, in March kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's step one is get the permits in place. Mm -hmm. And then step two would be advertising the project. Well, this assumes that you know funding is in place and ready to go so then we would want to advertise the project for construction and by the time it, it hits the newspaper that is the rfp for construction and, and other outlets say the newspaper in general by the time that happens the bids are in they're reviewed a recommendation is made and the contractor is um, selected it's about six week process so six how weeks mm -hmm. So how long do you give people when you send out the um, advertisement for the RFP? How long do people have to respond? I recommend a month. I think the minimum ought to be three weeks. So a month just allows people to, uh, like, like everybody, everybody's mm -hmm. busy, including contractors, a little bit more time mm -hmm. to build it, to pull it together. And, and then I say six weeks, so a month, and, uh, and the bids are open at the end of that month. And then you know two weeks just to to have all of the final paperwork issued. Mm -hmm. And who reviews the bids? You? We do would do boy yeah, and The DMK would be myself. Uh, this is my project I'm working on, and we would have recommendations, written recommendations to CPA and the town. Correct. So this will be the bids. Will, the RFP will go out in. Did you say March? We would be prepared. Again, that's. You know, uh, but ideally, I, ideally, we bid this thing in March. Yeah. Sooner is better. Mm -hmm. You know, in any construction year. Yes. Are there contractors aware of this project, just kind of waiting for the RFP? To I know there's at least one. Yes. Okay. That we consider to be a qualified contractor locally. <coughs> and that I think, if we're talking about the same contractor, I think he's pursuing like a hundred lot subdivision in Williamstown. So. I, I hope that figures into his calculus. Yes, I would in terms say. of availability, yeah. if that's in fact one of the bidders. Yeah. I mean, not just anybody knows how to rebuild a dam, right? There's definitely qualifications, you know, that we need to make sure. It's largely a concrete job. We come in, we excavate. You know, the the coffer dam is in. Uh, we've dewatered the area. We excavate down to bedrock. 
and um, under penance, and then build it back up. It's not a large job, you know. Um, it's not a complicated budget. So you wouldn't advertise until the funding is in place, correct? That would be my recommendation. You know, the uh, Curtis Pond Association of the town can certainly advertise it whenever you want. Advertising and soliciting bids prior to final permits happens all the time, right? The understanding is normally you're not issuing a notice to proceed to a contractor, you know, until the rest of the legal documents, such as permits, are in place. But we were also thinking about the bond, the approval of the bond by the yep. voters. Yep. Would right. that be something we, we could still put out for bid pending approval of the bond? I would certainly think so, yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, in the store, in the East Callis store, <clears throat> we were urged not to go out to bid until we had all of our funding. On the, the grounds that some contract that con that the bids would go stale, that if we had a wait of any time, that any significant time, that the bids would go stale. Right. Right. That yeah. They would, That's right. I don't know that that contractors would would indicate their bids only lasted so long or whatever, and that that would be a problem. Is that? Do you see a problem here, or do you really think we could go ahead and start the bidding process before we know the results of a bond vote? You could cross the vote so that the bids come in after the vote. Go to our. I'm just yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm not opposed to that. I'm just curious what you think. You know, again, uh, and, and our opinion as engineers and experience, you can certainly advertise and solicit bids. We normally have a minimum of 60 days from once the bids are in. To hold them, contractors, you know, responsible. It's part of the bid bond. Mm -hmm. If they can't pull their bid away, or the bond pays. Uh, we had a contractor. We bid the job last March, and for different reasons, the, the the job was was delayed over the summer, and they held their bid. And you know, in this case, the entity, you know, really wanted them. It was a good bid, and they're qualified, and so. They held their bid and were getting ready to construct it as soon as the you know the, the winter uh, spring conditions allow. So that happens regularly. That if you wanted to bid it, you could bid the project in January or February, middle of January to middle of February might even be more ideal. And you're not obligated to issue that and, and accept the low bid. The, the, the entity, the town in this case, the CPA, you know has. All of the flexibility we put in our documents. You can cancel, you can delay, you can hold. Okay, you know, that's and, good and stuff. To know. So, and yeah. there's no penalty if they bid and the funding doesn't become available. There's no. That's correct. Okay. You know, and, and again, we can get in specific language into these documents, you know, that indicate that, you know, the project, you know, would, would be, um, uh, you know, awarded only once things like, you know, construction funding is in place and stuff like that. So we can tailor this. It's, it's done regularly mm -hmm. in our industry. Yeah, there's a number of other pieces of your aware that have to be um, carefully sequenced. Yes, agreed. Other questions, comments from the board? Um, we have a couple of minutes if anybody who's joined us has a question or comment, comment to make about this. Question of Jeff. Will Worcester Road be closed at all during this? I wouldn't imagine so. You know, we did speak with one contractor last summer out there about staging. And, you know, uh, I don't think Worcester or Camp Road, we may have some very temporary, a few minutes or an hour here for putting up to get it out. But beyond that, no, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't anticipate any. We're not really doing any work downstream of the dam. I was wondering how the pond would be impacted during that time. You know, whether there's limited use. I mean, obviously, where the construction is happening, the other parts of the pond. The, the construction shouldn't affect any other use of it. Um, you know, as we're finalizing the permitting and, and the conversation that we haven't had is, you know, can 
the pond be temporarily lowered, the overall pond during construction. Um, even with a temporary coffer dam in place, it just makes it a little easier if a major storm comes in. It's just a little bit more on the safety side. Um, it doesn't have to be lowered at all. It can be maintained where it is, and then it should not have any effect. We get some, some buoys or something out there so a kayaker is not just going to make their way upon the temporary dam. And, and, um, but it, it shouldn't have much impact. Obviously, if, if it did come down a couple of feet temporarily during that three months, then yes, it would be more, you know, so. Okay. Okay, Any, anything else? All right, so well, we have you. some permits to, uh, you're gonna, and he's gonna leave. I'm gonna, gonna be leaving, leaving these yeah. with reps from the Chris Pond Association. Yep. They'll be following up with you. Yep. That's okay. Maybe the reps should, meeting. If they're gonna be warned, maybe you should leave them with the board. Well, that's what I thought you were gonna do is leave yeah, them with the oh, yeah. yeah. I will leave them in your expert care. Thank you. You're welcome. And we can chat if you got questions on that. I can give you a call and we can just talk our way through those but okay. it should yeah. be all laid out explanatory what we need to thanks do thanks for your presentation you're welcome thank, thank you for you having me thank you thanks, jeff. thank you thank you jeff. Yeah. <clears throat> i'm just getting that budget meeting on my calendar okay. Okay. Well, who brought these i thought you did yeah no. john did he's become the, the new food boy good he's become what i thought you did i i brought Oh. You know what, but that's mm -hmm. for later. Sorry, I. <laughs> um, Nobody leave without their bag. Okay, so where are we? We are on a personnel update. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we have um, an application for Director of Public Works, which we need to discuss. Um, we have no new applications for Treasurer Business Manager. Um, Sharon and I are going to meet with Gina Jenkins, who is the town administrator in East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. And we're going to meet with her and look at her, what her duties are as town administrator, have her look at our job description for treasurer, business manager, and just kind of. I think, uh, yeah, last time just we talked, talked together about, about town administrator. Before, uh, oh, Lauren, you're in East Montpelier, right? Yes. All right. Nice to see you. I was going to give a shout out to all the public posi all the positions open in town, but that might not be of much interest to you, unless. Happy to listen. <laughs> no, I I, I was uh, I wanted to catch callous people. Um, sorry, I didn't inter I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, probably all the callous people have heard it before. Well, <laughs> they, but we need to keep saying it. So go ahead, so that yeah, they so, want to leave, they can. Uh, no, they can go. So the. Um, on, as a general matter, folks, on callous personnel, we, we talk here specifically about open and employed full-time positions that we have available and need to hire for. However, there are also innumerable um, volunteer opportunities. And as you all are aware, our small towns run on volunteers. So uh, things don't work well when we don't have people volunteering. And we have open, we have a, we need in Calus a constable, a second constable, an animal control officer, a second animal control officer. We have positions open in the planning commission. Conservation commission. Conservation commission. That's, those are the big ones, yes. Yes. And then um, in March, we spoke earlier about opportunities um, that will be voted at town meeting. There will be four select board seats. Um, voted at town meeting this year, and the town clerk, the town clerk, and listers. Listers. And a number of those are not the incumbents are not re-upping. So, um, yeah, on the select board there are four seats. Actually, four of us are not are not running, and the listers. One person is not right. One running. person is not running. Oh, Cemetery Commission, there's going to be a seat open on Cemetery Commission. That's voted on from the floor. What else is voted on from the floor? Oh, um, public fund, was it trustees of public funds? Right, right. I think there's going to be, I don't know if there are, I don't, I don't remember who's up. I'd have to bring out my town report, yeah, but anyway. stay, pay, stay posted to the town website 
we're going to be posting um, a spreadsheet with the open positions and a little blurb about what that position entails. Yep. But it's not too early to start thinking about what's the right fit. And to please, I realize I'm speaking to people who are here, but please spread the word. You might want to okay, explain, so. You might want to just sort of put people here who weren't here before explain this whole thing with the town administrator versus and just what you're doing. Well, I th we kind of did. It's, I you can watch the movie. People can watch the movie from last week. Yeah. We are we are exploring a town administrator, and then we try treasurer. We try treasurer, business manager. We just want to keep trying to we can keep our options open. Keep options open and find things that will options, and then we'll get the job done that needs to be done. That's that's kind of the okay. And that point. gets me to my next piece. Um, I was talking to Donna Fitch the other day, and Rick and I desperately need some help with. Grants, grants administration. Um, this is right up Donna's things that she likes to do. She is willing to take all of the grant stuff that Rick and I can find. There's a, there's a box of file folders at the town office with all these different grants. So she's willing to take on the task of putting, going through everything, organizing it, coming up with a spreadsheet that we can use because we can't miss deadlines or matches. And like I said, Rick and I, I started it. Rick, anyways, it's a long story. We just, as it, select board members, we don't have time. It's a, it's like a one project piece that can be pulled out and at least get that up and running and organized so we don't miss deadlines. It's my greatest concern. So, Denise, um, you and Rick have been working on highway grants. Mm -hmm. There's also um, CLG grants. There is... Um, Say what CLG is. Uh, certified Local Government, which is the ones Historic Preservation. And they come does. from where? They come from Historic Preservation. The state, yeah. From the state. Um, and there's one currently, I think it's, it might be Maple Corner that's currently in process. Plus there's a, the one in Adamant. Um, I'm trying to think what other... Well, there's ECCT grants in process. Right, there's ECCT. I was working on some of that today. Right. And so I hope that we're... It's, it's the whole picture. It's, it's not everything. just it's okay. everything. And that's one, one tab for each grant. One tab for each grant. Um, so anyways, I'm going to work with Donna to see. I want it to be like easy, well, that, that's easy a, to read. That's a, so, so the question is, do we want to hire Donna for a one-time project, project of corralling the grants? John, you got this? Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so uh, my suggestion, okay. my suggestion is, is that we can't do it tonight because we didn't warn it. Um, Donna's all in to do this. Are we? Are I would we, like to suggest that we pay her twenty dollars an hour, not to exceed fifteen hundred dollars, without prior approval. And we'd have to vote on good. that next time. Sounds good. And she can't start until the new year, so this okay. works out That's fine. That we could we could warn it. To vote on this, we can vote on it uh, on the January second. 9th. Second, January second. Yeah, great. When we do our budget meeting. Oh, um, okay. Because that won't take long. And let the minutes reflect that the board, the consensus on the board, is to support that. Yes. I think that's great. After it's warned. It would be. Yeah. It, it's a one-time project. It's a one-time project. You know, and until we get somebody hired, she may be willing to continue to. Help us with the administration of the grants, the, the paperwork. There's a lot that goes on with grants, you know, as you know. I do. Um, there's a lot of things you have to do. I think it would be, yeah, I think it actually would make the job of, of anybody we hire so much easier to just take it over and run right, it all after organized. somebody's done all the legwork to organize it. And, and for Donna, knowing Donna, that'll be the fun part is organizing right. and, it. And, and, and to Donna's credit, she said, you know, yeah, I, I'd like to get paid something, but she said that really her main objective is to help the town. Right. And that's always really... Always has been. Oh, Donna's so always been willing to step us. up and help the town, and it's really, really appreciated. Great. All right, so... Yes, we can warn that for January 2nd. However, January 2nd is not a regular meeting, and let's resist the temptation to pile it up with other right, things. Right, but this is kind of budget-related. Then she can get started. Right. Okay. Um, 
Moving along. Well, now we're on public comment. Mm -hmm. Is anyone here to speak to items that are not specifically on the agenda already? Marge, would you like to come forward and join us? Yes. I, I, there's three of us that are part of the first part of the you know, executive board. Yeah, come on. Uh, well, I'm chairs. recusing myself, so I'm going to just move here. Okay, what is, what is this? You're recusing yourself. Is this, first time. is this under public comment, Marge? Yes. yes. Okay, and I have Colleen and and then we have a number of people that are from the Curtis area. So, um, we can So this is what it looks like. So, um, what we wanted to do um, was just talk about the repair and stress um, that we feel it's, t this, we would love to get it done this summer. Um, what we have a lot of enthusiasm, and we're afraid if we keep delaying and delaying, um, that it's going to what's going to happen is like what has happened in the last number of attempts. People just lost enthusiasm, and we've got some really good enthusiasm. So we're just requesting that the select board. It is such a great town asset that we uh, let's get it done. It is, um, what we wanted to emphasize tonight. Um, for uh, 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 asking, and I think you already put it on, to get the permits to be able to get those signed at mm -hmm. the next meeting, January 9th. The, per the permit application. Yeah, the application. Yes. So we have to be really clear. Yeah. We ask, and then we have to wait for somebody to approve them. Right, the right. permit Right. The permit applications. And I do want to mention that if it would make it easier on you guys, I know that the fees are minor on here. If you wanted the Curtis Pond Association to pay for those fees so you didn't have to deal with, I know that you're having lots of issues with the financial end of the stuff. So if it would make it easier for us to actually write the check out. Okay. Uh, does that make it easier? Yes. It does. It's the same time, okay. Yeah. So I'm throwing that out. You guys can choose if you'd like, like to do that. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, um, I wanted to find out when the ARPA funds, we've put a request in for a hundred thousand. When is the decision going to be made? That's, they're going to be, those kind of requests are going to be placed on the warning, just like the social services okay, right. one. So the ones that, like for something for the town, like the um, speed study, you know, we're just going to use ARPA funds for that. But the ones like for East Calus Fire District, the dam, and I forget. There's Twin a Valley Senior Twin Center. Twin Valley Senior Center. I think we should discuss the fire district because I don't know if there's consensus on that on the board. I, I, I have a different opinion. About well, that. well, about. That's not what we're talking about. No, 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 no. no but I'm just, I'm just saying that that's. Because obviously, if we we expect to have raised 250000 by March. Mm -hmm. If we can get the $100,000 thing approved, then we don't need to ask for the bond to be as high. Mm -hmm. right. right. I see what you're saying. Right. Right. Well, we can right. discuss that. Yeah, we but, can discuss it. Yeah, but either way, it's, either way, the request, well, so, <coughs> be a good thing to think about and talk about on the second. Yeah, and I, I would imagine that, that one of the roles of the board is to keep, we're, you know, we are keeping track of what the requests are. And we haven't really had a substantive conversation about um, whether we feel that we have a role. I think we do. I'll, you know, te spoiler, um, in deciding whether we will even warn a hundred thousand dollars. Oh yeah, it's up to us. Right. How much we will warn, mm -hmm. right. um, even if it all still fits in the bucket. Um, so that's that is a role for the board. And then, yes, to John's point of which bucket things fall into is a role of the board. Yeah, but, we, yeah, but, but we have to agree whether or not to put it on the warning and, right. and what that and, looks and like. And at what level. Right. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and I'm obviously asking that the, town, the select board approve to put, put it on the, agenda, on the town meeting agenda. And if there's anything we can do um, for research or help with any of that. Okay. We're aware, so you, right now, Marge, you're speaking to the request that we warn for the bond. 
Yes. So we're talking about two things. One right. is warning right. for ARPA funds to be dedicated, and, and another yeah. well, for either. If you need any any right. information, right. you know the, yeah. about the dam, yeah. the, we will help out. Yep. Okay. We're aware. Yeah, and, yeah, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, there was one thing I was going to say, and I lost my track of thought. Did you? Rini is the um, secretary, and Colleen is the president. I didn't know if you wanted to add anything to what I said. I mean, we're you know we're relying on Jeff's timeline. We're a little behind on that. We we thought we'd have the permits in hand now because we're at the end of the longest that was expected. It's taken longer as always. Mm -hmm. Always. But our urgency now. So a lot is in his hands that we can't really do anything about. But getting on the getting the bond vote on is in your hands mm -hmm. more so, and anything we can do to facilitate so that. So for clarification, we're not holding that. We're Du Bois and King is still. Consolidate and getting their paperwork already. Oh right, no, it's, it's yeah. them. But I mean, but only you can get the bond vote right. on. No, the, yeah, that's right. No, yeah, we can't sure facilitate that. that. So that's what we're asking you to put us a high priority right. right. to right. get it on this month. Uh, I mean, this this year's time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and to be and to be clear, Colleen, even if we didn't warn it for town meeting in March, we can call a special meeting anytime. For any purpose, so but with the construction people, the thing is, like we, we're this is year four for us, and we've always been advised by Du Bois and King that we really should have the contractor signed, sealed, delivered in January. I, so I, I us just doing to a bond vote in April or May would prop we lose a year. I just wanted to clarify that it's no, not, I, I get it's that. not March 2023 or March 2024. I realize that. Time. I just we could have a before town, town meeting. meeting. That's true. We could. We could. Yeah. You could, you could petition could. them just putting it out there. But I don't think his stuff's going to be ready. Right. Yeah. Well, we won't have all the approvals by and, then. It, it would make our case stronger. He doesn't have bid ready and if stuff. It, if, yeah. if it's oh, over. I see. We yeah. don't have a final number. We thought we were hoping to have that by then. Well, and actually, to John, to follow up on John's point, there's two ways that items can land on the town meeting agenda Warning. for war warnings to be voted. One is that the select board looks at each other and says, we want to put it on the, the warning for a vote at town meeting. Another is that people petition, um, and if we get a petition, mm -hmm. 50 people? 5% uh, five 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 of the voters oh, petition gosh. us and it's in Mark can research where it is in the deadline that we must get petitions. Might want to do that. If we get a petition, then it's not up to us. It just goes on because somebody oh. asked for it. So we can. If you do a petition and it's, you have to check with check with Jeremy, but it's probably it's five percent. There's about sixteen, thirteen hundred registered voters, I think. Half so it'd be about seventy ish. About, yeah, I would always get more. Okay. Um, so that's that's an option too. And I was going to say, for some reason, we put it on, doesn't pass. That's another we, way we can do it again. Right. That's right. Just, yeah. But you did it. Hello. Hold on, sir. Your name is. Go ahead. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, um, we before you would do a petition, we still need to have that number. Yes. Because you're petitioning to put a certain bond amount on. So, right. I think so what we're asking kind of, for is the bottom. I think maximum. Yes. I, think, I think it was maximum yes. four fifty. The and bond amount. Yeah, maximum. Yes, the maximum. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking. And if that, we don't spend it all. Well, and if it's something it over, then we'll just have to figure out how to. Well, and I know when we did it, when we um, get donations. Bill, bill three quarters of a day. No, but I think we get, if we get more donations. Mm -hmm. I think that would. Yeah, Mark. Mark Mahali, just as a clarification, I think logistically we probably want to go with the 450 just because what if the 100,000, let's say the board decides to put the 100,000 on the ballot and it is, doesn't pass, but the bond issue does. Oh, yeah. Then we'll need the 450. Mm -hmm. right. Conversely, we don't My have conversations to. have led me to believe that if you warn for a fifty, you don't have to spend four fifty. No, you, know, you could buy right. anything up to four fifty. Right. So the that, question. So, but it, it would make it 
more difficult for folks to vote for 450 than 350, right? Sure. Yeah, a little, that's and true. They, and, and, and kind of an enticement is, well, the town select board's already, if this were the case, right. uh, agreed to appropriate 100,000 of the federal monies that were in the, yeah, the ARPA funds toward this project if and when the bond passes. And, you know, I think so. That might entice people to support the bond. I think so. It, there's no question. Logically, for them, it would make no difference because if they vote the hundred in, then the bond issue would be the lower amount. But I think you're right that if the board puts the hundred thousand in, it's your way of saying it's this is board. something we support. We want to do and urge you to do it. And I think that might help. The other thing is. I think it, it, whenever the election is, I, I agree that you know, we could have a bond election at town meeting, we could have a bond meeting election before or in after. Advance, mm -hmm. But in either case, if it's not on at town meeting, we lose a year right. because of the season of construction. Mm -hmm. that, that's really the driving force. Yeah, is the okay. season. So just so folks yeah. know, if, if we receive the petition to kind of force the vote prior to town meeting, there's a cost to that. Yeah, it's right. sizable. Right, and, the, so, and a lot of time and effort for everyone. Because the bond vote has to be by Australian ballot, it can't be done. Mm -hmm. at town. Yeah. So that, that's a big difference in terms of the setup. Yeah. And, and that's what we would town. prefer to do at a town meeting. Yeah, that's why we would and do hope that. and we're being optimistic that's gonna pass, but we do you know, we do acknowledge that if if it doesn't pass then maybe then yeah. we might have to do a special mm -hmm. but then we've missed probably missed our window and so it, Right. But yeah. a petition I I think this was already clear, but a a petition can be for before town meeting or a petition can be after after or at. Um, I was so, just looking on this list, this timeline, to see when a petition has to be filed. To be on the warning at town meeting. To be on the warning. I'm just looking to see if it, it's, it's got to be on here, but I can't. Deadline for public petitions signed by at least 5% 5 5 of voters for articles to be included in the warning to be submitted to town clerk January 19th. January 19th, yeah. okay. And I did remember what I wanted to say is that I got I am I'm pursuing a we got wind of some potential grants so we're trying to pursue that too but those are there's no guarantee on right. any of those but right. I just we have been we're trying to get grants the federal ones take an ungodly amount of time so these mm -hmm. other ones don't I don't think will take years. <laughs> All right. I don't understand the timing. What are you warning the ARPA funds? You have to get. You have to warn. If what you if, if you want to file a petition to have a bond vote put on the town meeting warning, you have to file the petition. With oh the right. Town. No, I'm talking about ARPA. When you were talking about warning the board. Um, well, we're going to be doing a budget meeting January January second. You know, to talk about the warning, the budget, all those things. We so. We are warning at town meeting requests for certain requests for ARPA funds. So on the list that we, for the sake of discussion right now, assume we will warn is a request from Curtis Pond Association for some ARPA funds for the Curtis Pond Dam project. So there's no way we know anything about that. When voters vote, right. they right. will not know that. Well, just to be, to it happens at the same time. Further clarify. Well, it's like the warning for can special. I, I, we have I, to, I just wanted um, to clarify. I, I'm clarifying. <laughs> to further clarify, um, the the expenditure of the ARPA funds are solely in the discretion of the select board. Denise and Sharon and others have thought that it would be more democratic and allowed to allow the community to have input uh, on it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the select board can make that decision. But you're not making that decision. And we've made that level. decision in terms of the, the fiber optic okay. rollout mm -hmm. um, and maybe some other things. But, but the rest will not be till after you hear comment at town meeting. Uh, no, we haven't made, what Denise said, we haven't made that decision yet. We're going to have a conversation, I guess, next meeting on budget and, and affirm whether or not the funding request for the, the water district, the fire district in East Calus should be, you know, something decided by the voters or should we just do it in-house? Or, um, or 
or any of them. Or, or right. is it, or is it not a worthy request, and we won't approve it? At right. There's that. Too. But we will not right. know before town meeting. What? Okay. Yeah. Well, yes, well, no, they, they you could. Will know like, when to we be, finalize our budget, which way we fly. In our warning. In our warning. Right. right. Okay. In the warning. And so, what I wanted to make clear is that it will. My vision is it will appear on the warning like it does all the other social services organizations. You know. Use of ARPA funds, this is how much we have, this is how much the requests amount to. So it looks like the social services. So they services would be voting on to, if it made. Makes the warning. It would be, they would be voting on 450 and 100. For okay. Two items. Right. So I have two, they would be voting on two items for Kurdistan. Right. right. And, and the problem with, and the problem with warning them both at town meeting is that we would have to, Go high on the bond amount to cover both. You know, cover so now, can, that be, can that be amended mm -hmm. at the meeting, reducing it if the ARPA thing gets bond, done? Bond, you can't do bond, bond amounts. Point. The ARPA could, but the bond amounts are, are Australian ballot. That's oh, okay. going to be confusing to yeah. voters. So, I would think it might be. You just don't have to. It would be like bond. you're voting for five fifty for Curtis, not four fifty. Well, no, the bond vote would say its own it's amount. The warning would say its own amount. It's our, I know, but, but it looks like it looks like you're, you're voting for 450 and one right. Mm -hmm. Even though the 100 is coming from somewhere else. I, I would so say that would be against. Yeah, we need to move on. Yeah, I know. We we need to we need to move on. Yeah. 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 One question. I should know this, but I don't. Is the deadline for the printing of the Australian ballot? The same as the deadline for what's the deadline for printing the Australian ballot? He does that, Jerry. Um, it's well, Barbara's been tracking it. Um, the deadline is for when we have to get things to be deadline printed. for corrected public petitions included in the warning, January twenty third. Deadline for public petitions to be included in the warning, January twenty third which is the same time that the select board has to approve and sign the warning. So it kind of is, it works together. So it's together. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Moving sorry, on to <laughs> um, town meeting. So, yeah, so we have to do in person. Right. So we, we talked about this last time, and I just want to... Um, put this put this to bed. So I want to I want to put this to bed that we we talked about we we've, we've been engaging ourselves in this conversation about how to do town meeting and Jeremy was here last time and very helpfully let us know that we really didn't have a choice that town unless the legislature should take some action which. Last year, we fully anticipated they would, and this year, apparently, there's no reason we should particularly anticipate that. So, um, have you heard something new? I attended a VLCT um, legislative update with Karen Horn and Gwen Zucker. Zucker yeah. yeah. How do you say your last name? Obvious. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like they anticipate our legislature doing anything to allow us to have town meeting as we have the last two years. Right. So that confirms that the silence means that there's no... Right. Yeah. Unless our legislators hear from a number of people that if are they're concerned. Well, I would if, hope that if they evacuate the building suddenly like they did last time, they give us the same ability to evacuate yeah. our buildings. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. it doesn't always work that way. But notwithstanding, we could... The, the fact right yeah. now is we need to move full steam ahead on in person on the idea and right. the assumption and putting things in place to be in person yes and we don't even have to vote on it because there's no choice yep. so we're not going to keep warning this we're going to keep right and we can uh, decide later what our what we're going to be saying exactly about masks yeah. right right yeah, and yeah. unless we hear something or our representative hears something when he's attending various functions um you know that that there could be a change to that, and I, I you know, I, I've heard a number. I hear of that our new representative is planning to attend select board meetings. Yeah, which yeah. is almost novel. Yeah, um, I think 
that when I get back, you know, I'm going to probably take me, frankly, a week to kind of like get my legs. But the question I'll ask is, which committee handles this? I think it's probably GovOps, but I'm not sure. Yeah, no, they I talked about that today. GovOps. Let's yeah. go to the chair. Well, once we know who the chair of GovOps is, I will take the time to go to the chair and say, you know, we're forced to have it in person, but everybody's worried. What about masks? And you know, what's mm -hmm. the state of the current law? And would you? Is there any move for a change? Right, and they'd have to. The legislature, as you know, would have to act really quickly. They'd have to give it the timeline yeah, so quickly. Yeah. yeah. So um, I want to quickly ask Denise to just run us through our items and time on the timeline, just select board stuff, Denise. Okay. But then we, I, we had some conversation about our select board report. We have already missed the deadline. Yeah, we always miss it. I know, but we we were. Um, and then I want to talk. I want to break down our conversation about the report and assign specific writing to each of us. But go ahead, Denise, on yeah. the timeline. Um, okay, January 9th, final budget. Um, last day for the warning is the twenty third. I'm talking January now. Yep. Um, Oh, no, this is past town meeting, so we don't need to worry about that. But um, so that's pretty much it. January 9th, January twenty third. Um, okay. So we we in our minds, and then Mark sent a follow up, just documenting what we talked about around our our uh, select board report. Denise, just to memorialize, Denise is making a list of the things that we've accomplished um, or, the, or the things that we've done the things that we've done um, so if you have thoughts on just like a just a catalog of a list it doesn't have to be you know yeah a lot of paragraphs just it'll it's be usually just bullet a, points just a quick bullet point we'll you know try to stick to the more interesting stuff yeah. generally all right um, so things that are out of out of the norm, perhaps. If you have thoughts on that, yeah. I will ask Rick to write a report about the roads mm -hmm. crew. And did you get my email? You guys got my email. I just mentioned that we did win. Yes. That's right. I didn't hear it. Okay. Do you hear oh, me say we got an email? Tells me this all the time. It's okay. Yes, right. yes. It's called yeah, select. It's called yes. it's called yes. selective hearing. Uh, selective. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Spacing out. So yes. So I said that we talked about this before, and then Mark sent a note, kind of summarizing okay. what we talked about. I have to review it again, but. Um, and so Denise is making that list. I'm going to ask Rick to write about roads. Um, and then I had ideas about what Mark and John could write. Well, I hadn't. I'm going to write about volunteers. What I just said, put so we can put that in. Um, I'm going to list. I was going to do a list of the open positions and a blurb about ARPA, just to so people yep. understand what ARPA is and how we came. You know, it wasn't like easy. I remember spending. Do you think that I remember spending days trying to get into right. that system, and yeah. so you know it, it was a process, and I, I think, think people important. need to know what that process was that everybody had to go through. Um, I'm going to ask Rick. I said I'm write these things down now. Rick on roads. Um, John, do you feel like I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mark? John, do you feel like um, we're in a place where you could write something about the legal work you've been doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. John. In broad terms. Yep. Yeah. Do you feel TH yeah. seven is worth writing about? Or? Well, I think that I would just put that in our bullet in point. Bullet. Yeah, I don't think it deserves. I don't. It. I don't think it deserves prime time. Um, okay. I I, said, I kind of feel the same way. Yeah. yeah. No, I do. I, yeah. I, I mean, it took a lot of work, but it's not. It's right. just a very individual thing. You know? Yeah. The process is work, but it's not something that people want to read a lot of paragraphs about. Um, and what's Mark going to do? Um, I'll think of something. Well, I did ECC, as you saw, I did ECCT, and I did the dam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, that's good. I mean, you you know. Did you attach something? Me to, it's in, e in the email I wrote about yeah. two long paragraphs. Yeah. One okay, paragraph I didn't one scroll down third, enough. Right. Yeah. Okay, so. I gave you text to yeah. pull with. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's helpful. All right, thank you for doing that. And then. If everybody wants to send me their 
text, I'll put it into the format that we right. usually use. Right. Okay. And you don't need me to resend you that. No, I haven't. Um, and then I'll read it. I'll read it all when it's compiled and make sure we have one voice. Right. Well, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then. Okay, so we talked about the budget meeting. We're going to do that just to be clear again on Monday, January 2nd at 5. Mark's out of town. Okay. Do you want me to do a Rose report, what I know? And sure. we have John here. So I just have to put out a huge shout out of appreciation, dedication, commitment, willingness to go above and beyond for the road crew for this last storm that we had. Mm -hmm. These guys, I did their timesheets today, an average 24 hours of overtime, Whoa. on average. And that was within just a couple of days time. Um, John just barely got home from the long day and Rick got a call about a wet right. a wet right. truck stuck truck. a wet truck stuck on Apple Hill. Yeah, they were from Massachusetts. Yeah, there you go. Trying to get the power reinstalled. I mean and the and the linemen deserve credit for all the time they put in too. Mm -hmm. But um, you had to go out and help pull the truck, the wet truck, out of the snowbank or something on Apple Hill after he just oh, wow. got home from all this extra plowing. So thank you. thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a little truck. Uh, you were able to do it. So you put a lot of sand down. They what time was that? I started. The call came at five thirty. By the time I got back and reloaded with sand and everything, and it probably took me till quarter or six to get up there. Wow. wow. Yeah. So Denise, 24 Thank hours you. of overtime, no, awesome. that's not per person. Yes, it is. In per two month. days? Average. On average, in just over, yeah, two days, because you guys were out, when did the, you guys were out Friday. We start, actually, the week started on Sunday, I believe, when we had, uh, it was Monday. Yeah, we went out Friday. Friday. And so then you were out Saturday. Friday, we usually get down 11 o'clock on Friday, and we were there, so late Friday night. Right. And then we started at four on Saturday. Right, and, and then you, until two. I think it's two and then you were out Sunday too, I think. Yeah, yeah they too. were out Sunday too, sanding. Uh -huh. And now we have another storm coming for Christmas, yay. Mm -hmm. Which sounds like it's gonna be a lot of rain. I talked to I Peter saw, briefly. High yeah. Wind um, and rain and, and when I talked to Peter this morning he said the rain is just going to be a disaster. Yeah, yeah. that's what I hear. Um, I am, I'm very grateful for that you guys are there to do this. I'm also very concerned. 24 hours of overtime in a, in a what, 48 or 36, if it's a 48 hour period, that means that you worked a total of 32 hours, if my math is right, in a 48 hour, wait a minute, eight no. 16. Well, we we you guys got you guys go by the the yeah. winter roads maintenance plan so that you have a so ample got, break, right? Well, off. only eight hours off in two days, and that's and that's well, frankly, sixteen hours, but eight hours no. per day. No, no. If in forty eight hours, if it's really forty two, if they worked, yeah, if if, hours. if okay, let's stick with me here. Forty eight hours in two days. Do we agree on that? Mm -hmm. And they had two regular. Oh, is it because Friday wasn't? Yeah, because Friday was Friday, Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon is part of oh, their day. Oh, uh, so we the timing of the storm. So we right. haven't changed that so that we're so right. that's still a half a day, regular hours. That's okay. So we're paying overtime on Friday afternoon. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean it was. I, I yeah, my I, and one of my concerns has always been safety. Okay. My concern has always been safety, safety. right? It just and yeah. even and Dana came in, even though he said he for ten hours. Yeah, safety. <coughs> yeah, safety is a huge concern with that much work. It doesn't feel safe. Is the bottom line? It doesn't feel yeah. And I think it's not. I see your hand, John. In a second, I right. I think also we've heard um, beyond our own personal concerns. We've heard from the experts when we were in conversation with Better Roads that that's. That's outside a safe norm. Um, 
think they recommend eight hours break. Right, eight hours. And that's what's in our winter maintenance plan. Okay. But John, hopefully, you, yeah, hopefully we won't have another go around. Uh, and that's, yeah, while we at one point had budgeted for a fifth person to break that up. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, John. Um, you have a what question? What we ran into, especially Saturday morning where the wires coming down, we have truck radios, but no cell service. Mm -hmm. So we could talk amongst ourselves, but we couldn't get help from anybody. Yeah. We can't, we can't reach out to the state police. We can't reach out to yeah. the power Rick, companies. Rick mentioned that. It's a big uh, concern that we need to get better radios. I thought there was an truck. emergency channel you could reach out on the Not radios. on our radio. <laughs> really? Rick said that they're really old radios and that we really should have for safety. Yeah. Well, we're fine yeah. talking amongst ourselves. Right. It's truck that we can't. Jeez. Like when we come up on a wire down. What am I, I can't call, I can call another truck to sit there to wait the barricades up, we can't notify the record company. Or, or 911 so, or anything. So when the office is open, the office last night we had a radio. Yeah, we can call them. Is that still, they're still running that radio, right? Yeah. So but that's the, the, during office hours you can call in. Right. And, yeah. Right. Yeah, and Rick mentioned that you had an experience with a wire down and, yeah, it was not, yeah, a, it was not a safe situation. So thanks for so, bringing so that this, up. This also argues in support of our having a select board member as the road commissioner, because mm -hmm. then that person would have the radio, base radio at their home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, would it, that kind of an emergency, John could say, you know, one out of 12 road commissioner, mm -hmm. um, we need you to do the following. And yeah. But we should also look at just having better radios in the trucks anyways, even yeah. if they can get the road commissioner, mm -hmm. if it's two, three o'clock in the morning when you're starting and something happens, yeah. you need to have a way to be safe. Right. So we really need to be thinking about this. I have no idea what they cost. I've got to call CV paging about a pager for, um, uh, for uh, is it Ogden mm -hmm. or Dana? I don't know if they're the ones that would do some kind of radio thing like this, I can ask. If they do it, do you know who? Do you have any idea? So uh, well, we need to do some work on that. Yeah. I don't know if you folks know or heard um, names out of it, but um, last year, I guess it was a Woodbury plow truck, big expensive plow truck. Uh, one of the chains on the back broke loose going up Cabot Road. Oh God. And mm. lost control and went over the brink. Totaled the truck. Um, was the driver hurt? The driver, to my understanding, was not hurt, and he was able to radio for help. Thankfully. But uh, it shows you how critical those radios are. He could not get out. He was mm -hmm. pinned in the cab. Oh, gosh. Okay. No, is that Peter? Yeah. yeah. He works here now. So yep. I didn't know if you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. So Peter uh, Daly mm -hmm. was working for the town at the time, and he lost a chain on the back. And lost yeah, I think it's really critical that we have to do something right away. Yeah. Um, the other thing was, is Rick did a ride along with you on oh, Lightning God, Ridge yeah. Road. He my lunchbox everything. Oh, he did? <laughs> he ate oh. his lunch? What? It was going to my lunchbox. I had to stop him. Oh, stop <laughs> him. Tell him to bring his own lunch. But anyway, so, so um, you, you, he said that you guys went down Lightning Ridge and talked about ways to, oh, to, miti we, to mitigate concerns of some residents on Lightning Ridge, let's just right. say. We're going to narrow the plow. Right. Yep, so no that's way. great. I think that's great. And I could tell when I went by today, I could um, see the difference. The first truck Ogden was doing, he does the sand or the solving, and he didn't have the memo. And he did plow back first. Yeah, but everybody's on the same page now. Right. So that's, that's a great good. solution. Yeah. Right. And you guys have all the tools you need because I I think Rick before I found this Pretty yeah, major toolkit, but you don't don't need anything of that nature. Okay. I, I do want to ask a question. I got a constituent uh, asking me whether there was enough sand. Oh, <laughs> they God, live on Marsh. We sand and <laughs> well, they live on Marshfield Road, and they slipped and fell after trying about five times not to, and then someone else told me that they slipped and fell. I mean, and I mean, getting out of their car. Walking on the road. Oh, walking on the and road. I'm just wondering, is that just because um, it was unavoidable, just the conditions? We've been, we been sanding every 
and almost really? every day we've been sanding. I and think there's more. Sometimes it warms up enough that the sand goes down into it and it glazes over. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, I mean, walking on the road right now is not a good idea. Your friend needs some micro spikes. Yeah, she needs yeah. some studded studded boots. That's what so I. So that was a heavy wet snow. It was. And when that gets compressed by car tires, it turns to ice. And they're so not going to. So the snow sand. continues, sand. Yeah. continuing, and they generally don't sand. Maybe on hills they do, but they generally don't sand the entirety of the road system until the snow stops. And they're not. Otherwise, I mean, we're wasting sand. And let's just, right. let's just say out loud, we're not sanding for up to a walking standard. Right. You know, right. That's not. Right. That's not the. That's not the goal. We can't have right. a goal of. No. You know, bare roads or walking standard, people need to yeah. micro spikes. So I felt people need to tires. my wife wears spikes. Really good really good snow <laughs> tires and really good micro spikes. You know, folks just need to be careful. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you, John. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks Any, for coming. You can, yeah. You're a good resident and employee for doing that. Thank you. Nice yeah, it's nice to have people here. Um, okay, so we have that's our if we've asked, I'm going to keep carrying uh, Winter Plow Roots map. Um, yeah, did you guys work on, on updating that. the plow maps? Uh, they're trying different different things, and I now there's a difference between weekends and regular days, because um, like Monday through Friday, we're chasing school buses, trying to stay at a school bus at uh, different, uh, routes right. different than. Right, right. right. that makes sense. There's actually roads that would be more convenient to get them, like, in conjunction with the other roads, but we're going on the roads that the school buses run. Gotcha. Yep, that you're right. That does make a difference. Well, everybody's are pretty much up to date on what's going on. Yeah. It works out pretty good. Good. And if somebody gets behind. We got our radio is work truck to truck, and somebody will pick up. Okay. has been running around, kind of filling in a little bit. He's a, you know, we don't. He's not running chains. He just has a smaller truck, so mm -hmm. he can get around a little. If somebody needs something in an isolated spot, he can get around pretty right. good at it. Right. Did you did the water get delivered? No. Okay. I'll have to follow up with them. The bottle of water. The yeah, I ordered. I got a new person, a new company to do the water, and then I got to get rid of the, have the other company come and pick up the stuff and give us back our deposit. They were supposed to come last week on right. Wednesday yeah. or Thursday, which is what I told yeah. you guys. So I'll have to call the person I spoke with and see what's going on. Okay, let's move along. John, thank you. Um, we, so let's just quickly, well, let me just ask, does anybody have any topics to just update the board on that we are not already aware of, haven't already talked about? Okay. Mm, I don't think so. Um, we, our next meeting we've just decided is January 2nd to work on budget. Our next regular meeting, which is a Monday, the rec next regular mm -hmm. meeting is January 9th. Um, we will approve uh, the permit applications for Curtis Pond, mm -hmm. presumably. Can we warn the uh, speed ordinance? Oh, you did on that. There it is. Uh, yeah, traffic yeah, control. Awesome. Yep. Um, <clears throat> we can warn it for approval if you get us something in advance to meet. Yes, I would. Okay. Okay. Um, we are perennially hopeful that we'll have some committee appointments. Denise mentioned that she and um, Barbara are working on calling people. Yeah. And I asked, the, you know, the, uh, this may be obvious, but to make sure that when they're asked, we have a number of people who should have been approved in 2022. And for a while we were doing that sort of like staggered at any point in time people might be approved and since we're making these calls so late in the year I asked if they could line everybody up that they're speaking to to be reapproved again in March of 2023 because I don't know I'm sure that as a board the board will go all over the place over time but right now from where I sit it seems like it'd be easier if we had a point in time where people said yes or no well, yeah well, in usually, March <laughs> and then right well and usually we would warn we would call people and ask them to serve, continue to serve, or would you serve um, for positions? We would usually do that in March. So, with and all with everything everything going on with COVID and everything, I think you know we just got off track. Mm -hmm. So, if we ask them now to continue for the rest of this term and in 2023 as well, I think that's a good idea. Well, if they're one year, but some of them are two year or three year. 
Right. So being, you know, approved in March for whatever their actual term would be is great. Yeah. Um, and, and that's right now when we have the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department who will come and speak to us, although I think we already have their budget request. We have their budget request, which we're going to have to really look at on the second. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's it so far, although any number of things will, I'm sure, come okay. forward between uh, now and then. How would the Curtis Bond would be warrant item? Um, for what? We, it was in January 9th, the last meeting in which you have to warn. We warned about? the budget. We warned. So that's part of the budget. That if it's part of the budget, we have to approve the budget on no, the 9th. I'm talking about warning the bond vote. That'll be part right. of whatever that's, we do for warnings. That's part of the warning. Right. That, that'll be, so the discussion of whether to, to put the bond vote out yeah. will be part of the overall budget discussion. Oh, okay. Well, we should, but we should warn a specific conversation about warned items or agenda, agenda review, including warned items or something. For the, for the warning. For the warning, right. I mean, I think our January 9th meeting, we're really going to have to dedicate it to finalizing the budget, finalizing the warning, um, doing the permit applications, keep it really limited to those kinds of things because we have to get that done. Yep. So we don't yep. generally warn each specific item. Mm -hmm. We just that do that we are going to warn. <coughs> however, I warn a broader discussion. however, we, I absolutely encourage that we have discussions about um, unusual items like the conversation we had with Jeremy about changing the grace period. Mm -hmm. That was a warned conversation, on the, not a vote, but just a discussion so that everybody is aware, mm -hmm. if they choose to pay attention to what's going on in these meetings, that the, the absence will be of a grace period warn if that's what the direction we decide to go. We don't actually warn the vote. Yeah, I agree. Um, where, and also, we've had a number of conversations about the Current Response Association's request that we warn this as a as a um, topic. I would be uncomfortable putting it on as a warned item if we hadn't had this conversation. It's a little bit of a blind side. Right. You know, well, and I, it sounds like there might be a petition, so that's even. And a petition. Better. I wouldn't say that that's necessarily true at all. Well, that would rest. That would that would calm the angst because you would be in control of the request. The board, the correspondent association, okay. would be in control. Of the Do request. I have permission to talk to the town attorney about the wording of the petition? Sure. Well, no, you should pay for that yourselves. If you're going to warn an, an item, then the people who are bringing a separately petitioned, requested, warned item, yeah, have to, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. have have to pay for their. And Mark, we've had over the years, maybe before you only may remember, we've had warned items around fire immunizations, we fire department. What? Well, yeah. Okay, I understand what bothering me is. Number one, we are partners. You have, we've entered into an MOU which says we want this to happen. The town wants it to happen. The CPA wants it to happen. We both signed the permit applications. Right. You have a process with an attorney going on, which I am not privy to. Correctly. And so. I do not want to, not necessarily so. It's not correct. It's a choice. <clears throat> anyway, I'm kind of reluctant for them to go ahead and put something together, gin something up on the basis of some private counsel and have your lawyer say, oh, well, that's not the right language. Why should we do that? Well, we, we always have our lawyer look at the whole, the whole oh, warning. The whole warning. Yeah. And so if, you, if the Curtis Pond Association chose to request a separately, to go through the, let's call it the private process for mm -hmm. a petition, yeah. then I would say, sure, it would be part of the whole warning, but in terms of like really developing it, I think it would be inappropriate for the town's attorney to develop that warned item. It would be, in a, uh, that's my feeling. Otherwise, we're petitioning ourselves kind of in a way. I'm, I'm unclear. <clears throat> Are you saying that, let's say we put together something, the CPA put together something that says we petition the town to warn a bond vote for the Curtis Pond Dam for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Done. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Is that the language? Yeah. Well, it, it. it may. And there's any number of bond votes we have won over the years. They're not particularly complicated. They might yeah. be excellent models. You know, why don't you? 
here's a thought. Um, it's going to get reviewed by the town attorney anyway. So that, that's what that's I'm okay. Can I, yeah. uh, let me finish. But to make sure that if there's a petition filed, it's right, why could we not have Mark send John and I the language and then we run it by the attorney? Yeah. And, right. and, that would, and that would get to the same issue that you're addressing so that the, so that the petition I is... Think what you said, Mark, that's all it is. This is not that complicated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's basically. So why don't you why don't you do that? Spend four hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's not going to cost us that much to have, that. right? To have, it's yeah. Then look at it just to make sure that it's right. And the bond, yeah. I mean, as I said, the bond. I don't remember that we spent any time developing bond votes in previous years. Well, there hasn't been that many. Was well, there, there was been a bond no vote for before? trucks and stuff. The that's, not a, that's, that's not a we bond. We bonded for the fire department. Yeah, maybe that's it. No, that was years ago. Anything now that comes before the board for trucks and things like that, it's not a bond. It's, no, it's not because the payment term right. is less than... Is, it, is East One Player less than that fire, fire truck the last time we bonded something? No, no we, we, don't, don't we don't bond, we don't bond for fire truck. Term. Term. If the term is over five years, that's right, the magic it's five, number, right, it's five then we have to bond. Okay. Right. Um, that's what we've been advised by council. Right. Um, so the last time we bonded was the firehouse. The firehouse term is twenty years, so that okay. required yeah. a bond. And the last time, and the fire station, just so everybody knows, the first time they went out to bond, it didn't pass. The second time, it did. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's a risk. Yeah. Either way. Right. But All that right. was a little different, just to be clear. Yeah. Um, they had uh, a larger. Firehouse and more uh, exotics, probably not the right term. A, it a, was a more expensive uh, first proposal for the fire house in total. Yeah. And they went back and they revised the numbers and reduced the scale of the building and. And then it passed. And, and, and then it passed. The dam. It's not like we're going picking from a, a catalog of dams. This yeah. is not like the gold plated dam and there's a, you know. A, Copper plated one. Mm -hmm. There's one dam, it's a concrete dam, and, it, and that's what it's going to cost. So, that this bond is what it's going to be. Yeah, you know? yeah, there's not much choice in this. Okay, so, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we have to. Um, Can I make a motion to go into executive session? Yeah, um, please. Yes, make a motion to go into executive session to discuss appointment. Or employment of a public office or employee under one VSA section three one three A three and personnel matters. Well, personnel we'll, matters. We'll come out and do them again. Okay. No, that advice that we come oh, out. That's right. Legal matters. Yeah. Okay. So we're going in first. Uh, Denise has made a motion. Is there a um, time? This is eight thirty. Office or employee? Is there a second? Okay. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.